Welcome to dinner party tonight's continuing Christmas journey. Mac and cheese. What can it do but please? The mac and cheese that we're going to make is essentially Ina Garten's flawless recipe. Not into the nutmeg, tomatoes. Eh. So it's a little bit different and um, but her recipe is flawless. Now, here's the great thing about mac and cheese. You can make the whole thing and put it in the refrigerator and then cook it or heat it, crisp it when your friends arrive. I mean, what more can you ask for? So we're gonna make mac and cheese. We're gonna make some individual ones in these cute pans. And we're gonna make a larger one in sort of a baking tray so you can see both. But uh, mac and cheese, come on. It's nothing to sneeze at. Mac and cheese makes a big mess. If you're making this for Christmas, do this before Christmas Eve because it, it really is a little bit of a wreckage of your, your kitchen. So use your biggest pot because you're gonna make a big thing of mac and cheese. The first thing you're gonna do is melt six tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna put the flour into the melted butter like this, literally. Then I'm gonna whisk it around until it's incorporated and I'm gonna cook it for a little few minutes. Now this is a roux. When they say uh, in Cajun cooking, dark roux, light roux, pale roux, this is a pale roux. Cook that for a little bit. Now I have some milk here that's warm, but not um, boiling. All right, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna add this. It has a little skin on it, it doesn't really matter. It has a little skin, but you can put the skin in, it's okay. I'm gonna slowly add this and whisk. Now you're gonna think that there's a mistake here, but there isn't. It's going to join together and make a bechamel, you'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest. And I'm gonna stir this for, you know, four to six minutes. I want it to be pretty thick, even though it's gonna be inundated with cheddar and gruyere. And you can also add a little fontina. I like to put a little pepper in this. Uh, remember that there's a lot of salt in the cheese. So you wanna be very careful with salting this because cheese is super salty. See how the lumps are going away? I wouldn't leave it. You could probably leave it for 90 seconds or something, but it is milk. Oh, it's getting nice and thick, almost like an ice cream base. All right, this is beautiful. I love that it's quite thick. I'm gonna cook it for two seconds while I stand here. Now I'm gonna add the cheese and you're gonna see the mess begin. Here's my cheese. You might wanna take this off the heat. Now when they say take it off the heat, they mean take it off the ring, but I can't because we're shooting. <laughs> This is when you're gonna think, how is this possible to stir? <laughs> Cause it's gonna get stuck in your whisk and all this stuff. And then I just boiled some elbow macaroni. Some people like different kinds of macaroni. I like elbow, just elbow macaroni. Also, if you come home late from the theater, it cooks in five minutes. So it's always a good thing to have in the house. Okay, let that melt a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my cooked elbows, which are gonna go in in a clump. Let's see if we can get it to look like a French hat. No. Nope. Oh yeah, see it's a little French cloche. So you want to get this kind of separated. <laughs> Don't be concerned that it seems loose. It won't be loose when it cools, okay? And I'm gonna taste it to make sure that it's salty enough. But I'm pretty sure it's salty enough. Really good. I'm now gonna take this and fill our individuals. People love individuals. Mostly what you're doing is just putting cooked food in a hot pan, but it's more washing up, but it's people kind of really love it. But anyways, um, I'm gonna do two individuals in one baking tray just so you can see what it looks like. Now this, you could eat this. It's cooked, okay? Um, but it's nice to crisp it up like a pizza top. You know what I mean? Ina says to bake it at 375. Sure, but all you're doing is crisping the top of the cheese. 
This is a lot of mac and cheese, right? Just to to serve that with a salad, I guess, right? That's a lot of mac and cheese. These these hold a lot. They hold. You could also use little um, ramekins. So we did two individuals. I'm just gonna kind of spread this out. She puts sliced tomatoes. You know, when you're making this in the fall and winter, there's no tomatoes. Sprinkling breadcrumbs on top is not the world's worst idea. I'm gonna throw this in here. It's hard to say no to mac and cheese. I'm going to put breadcrumbs on top of here, one of them, so you can see what that looks like. Oh, this has capers. Okay, so just to show you what it looks like. You could put very thinly sliced tomato, like this, you know? I wouldn't put big chunks of tomato, and frankly, do not use the nutmeg. It's just gross. I'm going to put this in the oven. And in about 30 minutes, watch it. You know, if you don't like the top, if it's not crispy and brown enough, broil it for a second. But whatever you do, do not take your eyes off it because it will scorch. Oh, mac and cheese. To say this is nuclear would be to say nothing at all. So it needs to relax and, and cool down. But this is pretty up there mac and cheese. Your friends will not complain. Uh, I would let it completely go to just warm before you serve it. I crisped it under the broiler, which you can also do at the end. And remember, you can leave it in this state in the fridge for two days and then do this, bake it, you know, and crisp it on the broiler if you want. Put breadcrumbs if you want. My only advice is if you put it in the broiler at the end of your prep, just keep your eye on it because I make two for Thanksgiving usually and I ruined one one year because I took my eyes off it for two seconds. It was black. Mac and cheese. Who doesn't it please? Mac and cheese, what can it do but please?